by going live on video and we're going live on audio. All right, good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So this evening, I'm bringing on a new co-host. This happens very often on this show. Uh, but this gentleman and I have actually been connected through the online space virtually. I think we finally actually had a physical conversation, I'd say maybe a week or two ago, because he and I are working together on a little online campaigning. We'll get into that on this episode today because we do talk a lot about healthy lifestyle. And this gentleman is a very, very strong influencer in a lifestyle that I believe in, the NSNG. I've name dropped that a few times on this show. You've heard Vinny Toyrich, the guy who trademarked it on this show multiple times. Uh, but this gentleman actually helps run the, the biggest NSNG community in the Facebook space. There's over 21,000 people in there. I think we actually have other communities now because it got too big. He's been on Vinny's show. They've done meetups together. But more importantly, around our topics of health, business, and lifestyle, this guy and his business actually impact healthy lifestyle at a whole different level than you used to hear about in the show. And I'll just say it has something to do with restoration and air quality and maybe drying out a drowned house, uh, which happens in the, uh, in the storm trap ravaged areas. But long story short, his brand is Restore It Res Restoration. Okay, you can find him at restore-it-restoration.com. But without further ado, welcome to the show, sir, Lonnie Beecham. Thank you, Scott. How are you doing? I am doing great, sir. You and I have been virtually commenting, tweeting, I don't know, Instagramming. <laughs> I can't right. Stop anymore. <laughs> right. And then I think you and I finally got to physically talk only because Vinny yanked us onto a quick, you know, like he always does, the last minute uh, conference call. <laughs> last minute, hey, I'm on a conference call. Talk to Scott and Serena. Okay. Yeah. So so that was for, last Friday. For our listeners, Lonnie, I want to get into his business, but obviously what really got Lonnie and I connected, I think it's important for our listeners to understand the power of networking because I talk about it a lot in this show. Well, he and I never planned on getting connected. I mean, we got connected because of the community that he ended up connecting together for thousands of people. Uh, why do you catch a few people up on that? On how you and I met, or the the whole the, the origin, whole community the origins of the community thing, because a lot of people who have found my show have found me thanks to Vinny's show. Remember how we joke around about oh sure he called it the Adam Carolla bump. He's on Adam's right. show. People go to his show, and now Vinny's have been on my show, and people come listen to my show. So it's, it's I call it, I call it the Vinny bump. So right, right, <laughs> and bear with me. My employees are leaving. Oh yeah, no worries. And you're gonna hear them pulling out of my warehouse here as we speak yeah, so ladies and gentlemen real quick uh for the video feed because a lot of people listen to just audio we're actually he's doing a live feed from his warehouse in uh missouri correct yes sir jeff yeah. city missouri so this guy does a lot in restoration work and we're going to get into that on today's episode and how he impacts a uh, healthy air quality and a healthy home and everything else but back to our, our how he and i got connected on this whole nsng thing so <coughs> i met Vinny. well actually I uh, I learned of Vinny five and a half years ago when he started his podcast. He was only maybe 70 shows into his podcast, and now he's 1,063 or something like that. He's up so, there. yeah, so 1,000 plus shows, and I'm, I learned of him when he was in his infancy, back when they didn't think anybody was listening, and they were still shocked that people were tuning in, and... Um, since then, we, you know, I joined the Facebook group and we've grown it. And uh, in the last, I don't know, two, three years ago, I've become a become an admin of, of the group. I don't own the group. Nobody really owns the group. But uh, I'm started. Um, her name, I think, is Carla Hunt. But I <laughs> Carla Hunt, I think, is the one that started it. And it's morphed over the years back. When, when I first joined, there was less than a thousand people in the group and 99% of the people listened to his podcast. So we had a lot of back and forth banter with inside jokes. And, you know, when they said stupid stuff on Vinny or, you know, when Vinny or Anna said something stupid, we, we would have a whole long day long diatribe about that. And since then it's, it's morphed into a community of 20, maybe 22,000. Twenty-one. Yeah, actually, because I know there's more than one. 
Isn't that well, the community now? I'm going to do some screen sharing here. Well, there's been um, – oh, it's morphed into um, NSNG Grindhouse. There was a NSNG plant-powered group for a while that is no longer um, – what else is there? There was a NSNG UK group for a while. And well, then there's careful with that because he owns the trademark for NSNG. Yes. And he, he's always the honorary admin. I mean, he's part of it, but you know, Vinny, he doesn't partake very much and he doesn't say too much in it. Um, man, there's been four or five, maybe six or eight groups over the years split, split off from there. And, Anymore, there's there's only two, maybe two and a half groups now. One is a the admin team. Oh, what was it, about a year ago? We we were getting inundated with 250, 300 people a day joining the group, and right. one of one of the admin team was we decided like, hey, let's put the brakes on this let's just make it a secret group and let's like think about how to control this. Cause back in the day people were, I would, I would add you, let's say. Mm -hmm. So I, I approve Scott Mulvaney joining the group. And then 30 seconds later before, I mean, I saw that you, you've only been there 30 seconds and then people were like, what about beans? What about fruit? What about blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, and it was literally, we would have, what about beans, 20 times in an hour. And people, the members were like, they, they were getting mad. They were just like, oh, again, if you would have just scrolled back three screenshots, you would have seen somebody was asking about beans. And, and so we, we decided to put the brakes on it. And we, we didn't know this at the time, but so we made it a secret group. Yeah. And, so and that, actually, isn't there a public group now too? There is. And, and when we decided to, uh, you know, back, uh, this was before Facebook allowed questionnaires, you know, when you join a group now, when, uh, they always ask you a question. Well, this is before that time. So once that became available, we couldn't go back to just a closed group where you could search it, but not right. see anything. So we had to create a whole nother group that's literally searchable and you you know, you answer the questions, how did you find NSNG? Um, I don't remember what they are offhand. But anyway, Here we so go. I was just so, sharing the original secret group and there's twenty one thousand five hundred and fifty nine people in there. And but now I found the Vinny Twitter which is no sugar, no greens, NSNG, not the main group, it says in the description. So this is the public one, right? Right. And so and many of them think it's it, no, there's there's like nine hundred people in there. You oh, can no, see I see I see the admin. Okay. Yeah. And they, they, they join by the dozens or, you know, 20 to 50 people a day join that group. Right. So the, the admin group of the 21,000 main group, we also do double duty in that group. We're fielding people coming in, you know, wanting to get into the main group. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it can be a lot of work, a lot of hassle. Well, uh, it's funny. Uh, and FYI, just random side note for possible goals for you down the road. <laughs> I know I know you're restoring people's homes and livelihoods, but um, you'd be surprised how many people would pay you to learn how to launch or grow or manage or administrate a successful Facebook community. I mean, I had to figure this out on my own too. I have one that I started three, four years ago, and uh, you know, it, it's not under uh, Vinny's lifestyle goals of NSNG. I mean, but it was around right helping the CrossFit community or people who want to be a part of the CrossFit community, because I'm a CrossFit coach, um, integrate with the isogenics nutrition world, which again, he's not a big supplement guy, but hey, we're just trying to help people get healthy, right? Help you right. Get healthy. So that turned into a 4,000 plus member group now that I started. And only because I got tired of people messaging me and I said, like, why don't we just put you in a group in a community? And I finally had created a new admin. I've actually been the only admin this entire time because I learned okay. it's like, oh, maybe you create a little bit of a team. You find somebody who's loyal to the community. They respect why it was created. And now you get, you get share some of the management. Yeah. And I never thought about monopolizing on it, but we're so hands off. I mean, you know, the community, we don't really care what you say, drop, 
dirty words. Drop the f bomb. We don't care. Have you listened to a Monday show? I mean, yeah, like Big Twitter's podcast can get a little uh, edgy, but right. I don't, I don't edit my shows either. I mean, it don't get as dirty, but I have noticed a few people might complain in there. I'm like, guys, who cares? If you don't like profanity, then don't be in here. I don't know. Right, <laughs> right. So, so, I mean, as far as adminning it for the longest time, it was uh, just me and Ruel that that were the admins. I mean, Vinny and Serena were honorary admins, but they never did anything. But yeah. and then as we've kind of grown, uh, we kind of refer to Mark Thompson as the, the night crew, you know, he's in New Zealand. So when we're going to bed, he's waking up. Yeah. That's pretty Bef cool. By the way. Before when he, before he came on board, I would literally wake up to 37 notifications every morning and two thirds of them were people just complaining about, oh, somebody said the F word, or, oh, that was so offensive, or, and, and, you know, so literally, it's like, he's the night crew, when he, you know, when it's noon his time, I, I don't know, he's 17 hours ahead of me, so, you know, do the math, he cleans up a lot of that, a lot of that stuff, and then since then, uh, well, Ruel's in San Francisco, uh, San Francisco area, and then uh, Tallulah Tepper, being Benny's whatever stepdaughter or whatever she mm -hmm. has to be an admin and that's good and then she, she's uh now on the east coast like me right isn't she going to school out here yeah but she 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 jet sets more than i do yeah she goes to school in virginia but then she does something in seattle and i don't know where she's at and yeah. we, we we talk from time to time but and then well, we added you guys added me as an admin i think just to help out with the indiegogo campaign and, and right but it's like right. i i do not I, I told him, like, I, I told you, I think, I'm like, dude, I am not going to step in on what you guys do because I already have enough to do. <laughs> right. I mean, if, if there's something like, oh, we need to share the success of the crowdfunding campaign going on right now, great. Right. In there, right. And then we added uh, Rebecca Paulson. She's the most recent admin outside of you. I added you a week or two ago, three ago, whatever it was. Right. And um, so, yeah, to me, adminning a group of 20,000 is pretty easy because we're pretty lax. The only thing, just don't, don't fat shame somebody. Don't, you know, just don't be obscenely gross. Right. You know, don't, don't share, share nudity. Don't, you know, don't, don't violate the community, the Facebook community rules. Other than that, we don't care what you say. We don't care what you do. Occasionally we'll delete a comment. Occasionally we'll delete a whole post. It's well, I mean, not that hard. Honestly, and managing the group aside, I think the biggest takeaway um, that we can help segue the tr this conversation is that look at all the powerful before and afters that have come from the NSNG lifestyle. People, I mean, people just started sharing it. They're like, oh my God, this works because look at me, you know, a year ago, six months ago, two years ago. Right, years ago. right. And now that content, now Vinny or Serena or even me once in a while, we can now reach out and say, well, if you're, if you're fine with making that public outside the group, we will share you to Vinny's feeds and, you know, give you props in the right. space, which is great because it's helping me get like, you know, Vinny some new content because it's not Vinny making this up. These are literally true, truthful lifestyle transformations. And, and the NSNG community is actually very unique. We're all on Facebook. We're all part of groups. I have my professional groups and, and, and whatever, but, mm -hmm. uh, the NSNG group has spun real life friends from people around the world. We, we have relationships developing. We even have marriages cultivating out of the <laughs> NSNG. Oh, singles group. That's the, that's the newest that's one. one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Since I'm not single and I'm, I am married, I started the group. I was an honorary admin for a while just for name recognition. And then I've turned that the reins over to uh, Rebecca Paulson. And, and for a while it was my brother and, now he he met his his fiance. They just got engaged two three weeks ago, and they met in the singles group. Get out! And That's crazy. yeah, and now in in that singles group, we even have seven or eight relationships that are developing. We have actually people flying from North America to Europe to meet each other in the next few months. Well, and to, I actually, uh, I'll real quick, I'll do my screen share again for our video feed. You guys, I remember when Vinny released this one podcast back on episode 784, NSNG Meetups with Lonnie. 
uh, uh, Beecham, or as he sometimes calls you, Beauchamp. Bo Beauchamp, yeah. <laughs> but you know, you, this was one of the earlier, uh, you know, NSNG meetups. You guys now, once in a while, people are asking. Actually, I think I just saw on Instagram. I forget the girl's name and what her hashtag is, but it's keto something something keto. And she was saying, hey, guys, like this weekend, NSNG meetup in San Diego. So there's people just, I think, getting people together on their own. Oh, and I've hosted people at my, my house. My wife is not on, on Facebook at all. So she's like, why are these strangers coming to my house? What are we doing? I'm like, we're just going to grill out. I'll, I'll serve a good scotch. Yeah. End of my work day. Are you still there? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my wife has gotten used in the last five years. She's gotten used to hosting people. In fact, I've had Rebecca Paulson's Repul Rebecca Paulson sit on my living room couch, took yeah. her to dinner and stuff like that. Uh, she's the furthest one that's traveled to me. Uh, I've met Cassandra Taylor, uh, Kurt Leopard and his wife came to my house. I've had a few other members that have since fallen away. I've, I've had a lot, a lot of people. I had personally met over a hundred of the members, uh, at meetups and stuff like that. We just had one in Kansas city. And now I hear people are clamoring for one in Seattle and or LA again. I did hear that. And I think the biggest summary of the power of like, here's the thing is a lot of people who rip on social media. And I think if I could sum this up, I'm interested to hear your feedback as a co-host is listen, man, it's here. Right. And for now it's here for a while. So you have a choice. You can stay off of it. Like your wife. Embrace it. Just or, embrace it. Embrace it and use it for positivity. Like I am not the negative Nancy guy. Like my content goes through lipid fuel and everything else I do. I try and motivate and inspire people. I show my healthy fit lifestyle because I'm trying to get people to do the same when they're ready. But your groups, man, look at that. You're building loyalty. People are building friendships, relationships, because it has gotten harder to meet people for some people nowadays. So yeah, use social media for good, man. Like you know what? And in, in my world, I combine both uh, Vinny's NSNG group and my professional world. Uh, I've had uh, members reach out to me. They've heard me on the podcast. We've talked about mold and we've talked about my business stuff on Vinny and Anna's uh, Monday show of oh, three months ago, probably. But so I've had people reach out to me in Michigan, Arizona, uh, Florida, Texas, I can't even tell you, uh, Seattle. And they're like, you know, they're, they're asking me questions. And because of social media, we can network now. And I can say, hey, I don't know this guy personally, but I've met him online. He seems to know what he's doing. And I can reach out and call so-and-so in Seattle or wherever and uh, hook him up with people that are reputable, that's not just going to screw them. They have a connection to me. They, they know that I'm referring them to a personal friend of mine. So they're going to go out of their way to help them out. I love social media. It, well, let's, it's let's, let's touch on that, man. I mean, cause you're, you're sharing a lot of positive reaction here right now. So while we're chatting real quick, I'm going to bounce through a couple different screen shares again, cause I want to respect your time. And you know, we both had tight schedules, but you, know, you just ended your work day. I'm sure you want to go home and see your family. Um, so real quick, I'm sharing the Indiegogo campaign. So real quick, we hinted at this early, ladies and gentlemen. We're not going to. Oh wow, ninety-five yeah. percent, one hundred forty-one thousand, almost one hundred forty-two thousand, oh, right. Scott. Yeah. Well, wow. I, I just I just hit um, our latest email blast was a couple hours ago, and I blasted the new uh, graphic we made all over social media. So um, and that was something that Debbie made. So shout out to Debbie because she's great. Okay. Website. But yeah, man, we're now 95% funded, ladies and gentlemen. So again, if you've never heard of this, because uh, I'm going to try and get this podcast out ASAP, I'm going to bump some of my other shows out of the way. Uh, it's what I did when I brought Peter on, when I brought Vinny on, when we, when we launched this campaign. So quick, ladies and gentlemen, Fat A Documentary. You can search for it in Indiegogo or just go to fatdocumentary.com. We are literally recording this on May 31st. I'm going to try and get this out before the campaign is out, just an extra boost. We are talking about extending the campaign. Uh, because movies cost more than this, <laughs> but the goal was right. hit, the goal was to hit 150 thousand. We are gonna hit this. This is exciting. There's lots of cool perks on here: hats, shirts, consultations, you name it. Go con shells. Yeah, Can't con shells. I think that's a whole different podcast. Um, but in the end, 
one of the reasons why Vinny's campaign is doing so well is because he's got some of these viral communities, these passionate people, they're spreading the word. We got, we got Serena created the super backer thing where we got referrals happening, people sharing from Indiegogo. So I just wanted to touch on that real quick, but then back to what you brought up, right? Cause this is about you. You're the co-host today. I'm going to share restore restoration, right? You just hinted that you, this is your business. This is your income. This is your livelihood. Right. Who would have thought, Oh, I started caring about health, my healthier lifestyle. So I'm in this community and next thing you know, I'm an admin and then, Oh, people gain respect and authority when you're doing things at a higher level in life. And then when you don't expect it to come back to you, it does come back to you. And that's what I just heard from you is that you're getting people that actually, you know what? I've heard him talk about this stuff and I respect him over here. You might want to go check him out. Right. Who would have thought a, a guy that, Sniffs mold for a living is friends with uh, people in LA and Hollywood now, huh? Which, by the way, do you really sniff mold? Like, I don't know. Just, just forget to ask. <laughs> uh, actually, I, I live with it. So, yes, I, I do. I, I see enough of it. In fact, I just turned, turned down a $25,000 job today. Oh, because it was too dangerous? or No, because I was going to exceed the value. $25,000 for mold, $15,000 for uh, asbestos abatement, wow. and then another $30,000 to put it all back together. And the property is only on the market right now for $59,000. So it's like, eh, I don't need that hassle. That, that's, that's, that sounds like a lost property. Um, exactly. I don't know what to tell the lady, but I'm not the guy. Yeah, so, so real quick, because I'm still doing video sharing for the YouTube feed. This is deeper than just, oh, I got a little bit of flooded water and my carpets got wet. I mean, and you're, you're in the South, man. So, I mean, your guys are really connected with the, the tragedies from Katrina, the damages from that. It, this happens a lot. I mean, you got people in Puerto Rico right now still going through recovery. People yeah, Carlos, Carlos Donas, he's a, he's a member of the NSNG group. He's running some 300-mile race or something to try to raise money to get his family on Puerto Rico back with power. Yeah, it, it's the whole, whole grid was was jacked. Oh yeah, everything, everything. Yeah. So so sorry I interrupted you, but uh, oh, no, that's we're, we're co-hosting. This will happen. Yeah. Here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Some people on YouTube actually comment on some of my videos that I talk too much. Number one, it's my show, so piss off. Uh, number two, <laughs> uh, you don't understand that we're dealing with internet connectivity. So sometimes, depending on internet performance, like Lonnie is like taking time out of his day in his office on an iPhone. I'm luckily in my home studio, but also it is almost 6 p.m. here Eastern in my hop up. So now people are getting home, turning on their TVs. There's only so much internet bandwidth available. So sometimes we may over talk each other, but that's literally because we don't realize we are. <laughs> right, right, right. So I, I just never, I never bring that up enough. And I think I need to because people just don't get it. So uh, anyway. I, I understand, Scott. So <laughs> you're good. As I'm drinking some pure coffee club. Uh, Coffee I, had, right now. I had some nice uh, athletic blend because I had to be on the road to go train on indoor air quality this morning at a contractor's uh, around 7.45 this morning. So. so so, tell me what you know about indoor air quality because now I can I can get geek out on that. Oh, uh, well, these guys are um, – so the, the mini split ductless market, I'm, gonna, I'm about to geek. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to probably ever heard this stuff on the show before, but one of my biggest clients is the HVACR sector. She's a manufacturer sales rep firm. So I support that firm and I have a contract with her and I go out and I train contractors on the product lines that she represents that are then sold through the professional distributors that the contractors shop at. So there's your quick skinny on a manufacturer's rep. Um, so we're trying to change the industry and show how reps aren't just doing sales like dude learn the stuff and teach teachings what's at. So long story short, one of the products that her firm represents is a simple five minute swab test. It's a uh, microbiological screening kit. So you just take a swab, swab that coil of, of the AC system and you put it back in a little chamber, you crack it and it had basically a protein test and it's testing for live, you know, proteins. Okay. And so mold, fungus, bacteria, they all have a live protein and this was being used in the food prep world. And then they, Basically, it's the guy's like, wait a minute, this stuff exists in, <laughs> in the air conditioning world. Let's do something about that. So it's a cool little five-minute test. Like if, if you have a lot of exposure in there, in five minutes, that thing's going to turn purple. 
Uh, if it's not, it might be pink, but then if it's like there's nothing to worry about, it might stay green or maybe go a little gray, but it's not crazy. So it's, it has four different stages, but it's, it's about time lapse. So that was part of the training, right? It's like, hey guys, you can actually test for this stuff on site. It's not going to tell you what it is. It's just uh, it ha- what kind of intensity is available. Right. And the, and the funny thing was the duckless head that was in this office of this contractor failed, hit purple in four and a half minutes. So No kidding. <laughs> so they clearly haven't cleaned that in a while. And sure enough, we opened up the panel, and there's all kinds of black crap caked up in there. And on the a on the a coils. Yeah, well, that, that's and drip it. pan. Yeah, well, and again, this is a mini split head up on a wall. This is even mm. you're talking about traditional residential. A-coils. Right. Okay. Yeah. Forced there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's another company that is from Connecticut that we, we represent and train on called Speed Clean. They make all these portable cleaning equipment to clean the coils. So we set all that up and there's the whole bib kit system and you hang it off the head off the wall and it just helps them clean it faster. And then afterwards, there's a UV company we work with out of uh, Vermont yep. called, right. called Ultravation. And they came out with a UV kit specifically for the mini split heads. So that way, okay. hey, I'm not going to be back there for a year or two. I'd rather come back and just clean like dirt and dust buildup and not actually have a Petri dish effect happening while I'm gone. And those UV lights are phenomenal. Yeah. They, they, they really are. They even cut down on uh, virus, bacteria, and mold. Oh, yeah. Well, because it, now, see, now we're going to geek out. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting healthy right here, right now, is Lonnie understands this stuff. I understand this stuff. But people, the contractors, don't like talking about it because they say it's a consumer-driven process. And I said, well, it's only consumer-driven because you're not talking about it until there's a Right. Problem. And then yeah. people like you. And in the sales world, I used to be 100, my income used to be 100% sales commission driven. And I got out of that business to get into this business, which is still 100% sales driven commission, basically. But I've learned over 18 years of being in business that the, the more I educate, I don't compete with my traditional competitors. I mean, when they see what we're doing and, and what it does, it it takes care of itself. I ask you as a homeowner a lot of questions, and then I, I supply the necessary remedy to fix it. And um, so, so let me ask you this, Scott. Do you know the term psychometrics? I do not. Oh. Well, that's a... Uh, I don't get involved in a remediation process. My buddy's company that he's actually selling, he, he did, um, he even said he loved the swab test kit thing, but he's like, Dude, he's like, I've already been called in to address the problem. They already know there's a problem. <laughs> right, right. Well, if you want to impress your HVAC friends, study up on psychometrics because they all know it. Uh, in my world, the only time a restoration guy pays any attention to relative humidity is the very first day I walk into your home that, that has been flooded. After that, I don't honestly care about what the relative humidity is. I do, but I don't. I want to know the specific humidity. I want to know what the moisture in the air weighs because wet goes to dry. And um, so psychometrics is the balance of, of, of the, uh, well, it's the f- science of the flow of water or something like that. But anyway, study up on that, and, and I guarantee you, your HVAC friends, they know the term psychometrics. They, they will be impressed if you can talk grains per pound and uh, specific humidity. Oh, Trust nice. me on this. Yeah, May not know. totally apply. Um, and those swab tests are, are phenomenal. Do you ever deal with the the uh, Petri dish from Lowe's? or? No, that's why I recommend the swab test kit. Because yeah. Because I get those, I get those cross-contaminated so much. Oh, well, and it's 100% because even in, in the Bible, Leviticus chapter 13, 14, 15, that's the original mold protocol that we still follow in 2018. Basically, wow. a priest will come in in the Old Testament. We're talking Old Testament, right? So yep. if you have green growth on your wall, a priest would come in, take a look at it, deem it clean or unclean. You would have to clean it. The, the, the priest would have to come back and, and deem it clean or unclean. And if it was unclean, then they just burnt the house down back then. <laughs> well, we don't burn the house down, but... You know, it that's essentially still the same protocol. So, so but those people, I have to share this with you. I do know what 
psychrometrics is, I didn't realize this, but a whole, I'm going to, I'm going to do a weird full circle for you right now. Okay. I'm, I'm screen sharing Wikipedia and I, I didn't realize how it was spelled. So I looked it up. It's psychrometrics, right? Crow, not right. You know, cause I think people mix up with psychology, but right here it's field of engineering concern with the physical and thermodynamic properties of gas to vapor mixtures. Uh, the term comes from the Greek sukron. Anyway, so here's the funny thing. I'm looking down here in the contents. They break it down. They talk about dry bulb temperatures, wet bulb temperatures, because you need that to figure out the relative humidity. Right. So check it out. Psychrometrics. You ever hear of a psychrometer? Yeah, I, I own several of them. Okay. Do you, so you have the, the sheet metal one with like the two bulbs on it, and you spin it on a chain? Well, I use a little more scientific method now, but. Well, guess where I use that? Where? When I served as a federal wildland firefighter out west, there you go. Every 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 hot shot or not? Well, we were hot shots, but every wildland firefighting crew went on a division in the mountains. Every hour on the hour, one man on that crew or woman should be should be we called it spinning weather. Okay. So, so you would spin your psychrometer. For yeah. With a wet bulb, dry bulb, take down your measurements, spin it again, spin it again to get two three readings. Just to make sure you're accurate. Then you take a wind test. Then you pull out an altimeter chart, uh -huh. altitude, and then you would figure out your RH values, relative humidity. Right. That, that would help us track and determine, because everybody could be at different altitudes, different divisions on the fire, and we would report that in. That's how we would monitor Mother Nature, because if all of a sudden we had an RH drop and a wind increase, oh, then, big trouble. You get, you get the hell out of there. So that, right. was, my, that was my life for a couple of years. I don't know. Okay. So. All right. So. And that's the world I live in. Everybody talks about their humidity levels. And I'm like, yeah, what's the specific humidity? I don't care about relative. I just care about specific humidity. So Yeah. And, and again, I tell people in, in HVAC, I'm like, guys, moisture plus dirt sitting in a contained unit. Right. I mean, granted, there's different levels of dirt. So depending on how good you built the system, how good the house is, how tight it is, how your do you have humidity control systems in place? You know, do you have uh, the ability to bring in fresh air? Is it closed off and stagnant? Because uh, all this brand new construction right now, they need people like you because oh, people are not building homes with fresh air. They're too tight. They're too tight. Too tight. Just just brushing your teeth, doing your laundry, doing uh, showers, cooking, all that. I, I have done. I've done fifty thousand dollar mold remediation projects on a brand new house that doesn't even have siding on it and it's already growing mold because they build them so tight. And you, if you got a connection to the HVAC world, here's what my biggest thing that I see is they all build the units too small or, or I'm sorry, they oversized them. Yes, it'll reach 65 degrees in 10 minutes, yeah. but it doesn't cycle long enough. It short cycles so bad that it doesn't pull the humidity out. Yes, it's the right temperature, but it doesn't run long enough to pull the humidity out. And then guys like me get a phone call. Uh, I, I do more work in new construction than I do the 50-year-old houses. One part of the problem is uh, they're doing what you're saying, and they're not taking advantage. Something as simple as been around forever is doing things like zoning. So zoning the home right. so right. you can adapt the system. The system can now adapt accordingly, not trying to do everything all at once. That's part of the problem. Number two, uh, they're not bringing in the fresh air, right, or makeup air. So, right, right. Uh, the new code changes happening north up here is there's equipment known as HRVs and ERVs. So these oh, are yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Energy recovery ventilation systems mm -hmm. and energy recovery ventilation systems. So that's part of your workaround, but you're adding a few grand onto an install now because that's another whole piece of equipment. And right. I realized that they built these new homes so energy efficient that, oh, crap, we now we're being told by people like you, dude, guess what you did? And now they're saying, well, if this is happening consistently, now it's actually affecting the building code changes because now it's becoming a legal issue. So that's why they're going to change the codes and they're going to start requiring, depending on where you're at, actually you have an HRV and ERV installed. Because currently I have contractors telling me, like, dude, we, they've added it to their paperwork. And they make the homeowner or the builder sign off if they don't want it installed because it is more money. Right. So they're saying, listen, you will have a problem. Not if, you will. So you will, right. Do this, or we're going to have a problem later and you're going to be giving me a call and then probably people like you a call. And hopefully you're not dealing with uh, uh, places that have 
codes that allow ventilation to just go in the attic. Because anytime oh, you're okay. dealing with uh, ventilation systems in attics or crawl spaces, I mean, that just, attics start at $15 a square foot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, and that's just if I just go poke my head up there. Yeah, and if, if there's mold, lot in my area, a lot of, lot of counties will allow showers to vent directly straight into the attic. I'm like, well, that's dummy. <laughs> yeah, dummy. You, so you're putting all this warm, hot, humid air in a warm, hot, humid environment, and you're just multiplying the microbes and the, and the mold and everything. And then you think I'm going to go in there in August for, you know, pennies on the dollar. Oh, no, no, no. That starts starts at 15 to 30 dollars a square foot no and unfortunately all this is happening it's funny because actually literally as we're talking about this my my hvac guy has just gotten here because i'm going to have him improve upon the system in my fiance's house that i now live in with her because things weren't done right before me <laughs> and i'm like uh just because i work in the industry doesn't mean i'm going to do it myself i'm going to bring in a professional so obviously i don't need you right now but um for and actually uh, that's a good segue then for timing so let me do some screen sharing again so Real quick to sum this up, and I'm gonna share here, ladies and gentlemen, if you wanna learn, even if you're not in Missouri, you wanna understand more about restoration and mold remediation, things like that. So he's on Facebook. So you need to do, just search for Restore It Restoration, three words, and you'll find Restore Restoration LLC. Uh, he does have a YouTube channel, uh, but I, you haven't grown that out yet, but hey, he's available on there as well. There's some video up there, it's installation. Uh, See that like video that. right there? Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. So I, I deal, my market is middle, upper income people. That's so an upper she, income house. <laughs> oh, th that ceiling's 50 foot tall, Scott. That's and she calls me and, and I, know her, I know her family name. And she yeah. says, I have some drapes that need cleaned. So short story or long story short, those, you see my scaffolding, you see the guys were trying to hang curtains that are 30 feet, 35 feet tall, hand, hand sewn silk. Oh dear God. And, and then she was trying to get a quote over the phone. I'm like, I need to come see this. Cause just knowing, I mean, it's a 15, 18,000 square foot home. I'm like, I need to see this. Cause I can only imagine. Yeah. That's, and, uh, that's just absurd. <laughs> right. And I say, no offense, but I really need to come see this. And then it turns out, um, I needed to bring in two or three different specialists to help facilitate that because 35 foot drapes, hand sewn custom silk is not every day. An eight foot set of drapes, no biggie. I can tell you something over the phone, show me some, share some video or screen time, you know, FaceTime, whatever. But so, so, so your website. All right, you talk about 24-7 emergency service because this can become an emergency. You're dealing with people's lungs and livelihoods, et cetera, especially if water damage, right? You got right. Accidents, you got animal cleanup, you know, dead carcasses, carpet cleaning, clean, disinfecting mold areas, mold remediation, odor control, uh, sewage backups. That's a real problem. <laughs> Tile, ground cleaning, water restoration. Now, in here, I notice you're certified with the IRCRC and the CRI. So here's the thing. If anybody hears this, and obviously, it makes us here in North America, but whatever. If you don't know somebody that has this type of level of services, I mean, do you have people call you sometimes say, hey, I know I'm not in your area, but I heard about you on the podcast. Um, I know you might be able to help me because I'm too far away. Is there like a community? Like, do you refer people or is there like a group of professionals like you're a part of since you're a certified member of these things? Well, the communities that I'm a part of are 99% guys yeah. and they and it's a closed group. So you kind of got to know somebody to get in. And honestly, I will not refer them to my industry group since it's 99% guys. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that goes on that's said that shouldn't okay. be said in public. But anybody can go to the IICRC or the CIR and look for their consumer tab. It, they make it very easy to find. You can find a reputable company in your area that's certified. And uh, and, and, and the IICRC, that's the, uh, before you ask me, because I know you will, it's the International Institute of Restoration IICRC. Hey, we I'll just thought. I got technology. We, I'm just going to show yeah, you. 
we throw it around so much, I kind of forget what it stands for. But Institute of Inspection, Cleaning, and Restoration Certification. And that organization of itself is uh, ANSI certified. It, it is our benchmark. It is our certification. It sets the standards to uh, be a part of that. So, These guys um, are involved with like uh, CSI and stuff. Uh, kind of. I saw something pop up on here. CSI? Like crime scene cleanup. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's a sub. I used to do. I used to do uh, trauma oh, yeah. body cleanup. I don't do that anymore. But I wow. I have all my shots. I have all my certifications. Bloodborne pathogens. Um, I I I I I have lots of vivid memories of uh, what it looks like when when that service is needed. And I personally don't want to do it, so I don't make my guys do it. That's cool. I mean, here's the best part. You reach a point in your business, and, and I'll, I'll, I'm done sharing these guys, but this is cool. I didn't even know there was actually a carpet and, and rug institute. So it shows that, you know, once you take things to a professional level, you eventually need little organizations and groups to hold everybody accountable. Um, but it's cool that you've reached a point in your business, though. I think this is crucial as a business lesson that um, just, just like in health and fitness, right? Eventually, you need to go to a professional, and you got to make sure you eventually know, like, okay, I don't need to work on this because this is my niche. This is what I have become known for this is what we excel at this is what i want people calling me for right right yes so that's awesome well listen uh to respect your time and obviously my contact or something things are crazy uh, again quick shout out to the fat documentary.com ladies and gentlemen all right lines behind it i'm behind it we're going to make this documentary movie about the truth of healthy fats happen Vinny Tortorich is passionate about it. His lady, Serena Scott Thomas, is passionate about it. The movie director, Peter Pardini, is passionate about it. Trust me, there's a lot of exciting things happening right now. So we plugged it earlier in the show, and I had to throw there at the end. Uh, but Lonnie, man, I mean, how do you want to sum this up? How do you want to close it out, Mr. Co-host? Uh, is there any all-encompassing thoughts you want to throw out there? Well, no matter what happens, here, here's the two or three things I live by. I wake up as a dad first. I go to bed as a dad, all the business stuff in between. I get dirty. I crawl in crawl spaces. I deal with sewage. I deal with nasty, nasty. But I, I wake up as a dad and I go to bed as a dad. And I respect that first and foremost. And then uh, as a business, uh, my tagline is put your life back to normal. That's what I strive to do is get you back to normal, your, your home or your business. I love that. Simple, but that's what I live by. Ladies and gentlemen, health, business, lifestyle. Let's get it back to normal. Listen, Lonnie, hang tight. You can probably your bio off the air. Okay. Gentlemen, okay, I've talked about it multiple times now. Make sure, again, if you if you have any of this stuff happening in your home, around your home, please, like, if you, have no, if you don't know a company yet, go at least go to restore-it-restoration.com. That's his site. You can at least read up on his end and then figure out your end if you're not in this local area. But obviously, he's in Missouri. So shout out to the Missouriites, if that's a word. Uh, but again, FatDocMary.com, Restore Restoration, the NSNG. Check out Vinny's uh, Facebook group online if you're looking to learn how to live with less sugars and grains in your lifestyle and finally learn what it's like to reduce inflammation in the body. But hey, that's another Little Fuel Show, guys. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for living life to the fullest. And remember, you too can live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon.